Hey everyone, my name's Gav from GK Videography and on this channel we help you become a better video creator. And in today's episode we're going to show you 10 hacks to become a faster editor in Final Cut Pro 10. Now if you've been around for a little bit of time on Final Cut now, you probably will know some of these hacks, but do stay around to the end of the video as there may be some that you pick up along the way. Now the first one that I see a lot of people making the mistake of is not editing from an external hard drive. Now when you're running Final Cut, if it's having to then read the files from the same hard drive, this will really slow down the resources of your computer. So you want to be storing all your video files on an external hard drive. Prefer a solid state drive because it is much quicker. I edit from this little Western Digital one terabyte uh, SSD and the difference in playback through the edit and the whole editing process is much faster because of it. You don't want to be bogging down Final Cut Pro by it having to run Final Cut as well as read the files from the same hard drive. Now hack two is a simple change in the settings within Final Cut. You want to be going over to your browser window. Here I have a clip in the timeline of some carting footage. Now all we're going to do is basically change one selection to help the whole edit play smoother within the uh, viewer windows so we want to go up to view at the top right and then select better performance yours may be set on better quality if you've never changed it so better performance all that does is play the video files at a lower resolution in the viewer so that Final Cut can keep up and not drop frames and have any jittering of the the playhead as it goes through the edit now if you're already editing from an external drive, you've already got better performance selected but your playhead is still struggling to go through the edit and play and it's, you know, it's jittering like, like it does sometimes, then we can do something else and that's proxies. Now proxies is a way of duplicating the footage that you have in a lower file size so it's much smaller so then your computer can handle playing through that smoothly now there's two ways we can do this say you've already imported the footage in to final cut like i have here we've got a go-kart in edit and it's struggling i mean my computer is keeping up with this okay but say yours isn't what we can do we can select all files in the browser so we click into the browser one clip then command a to select all we can then go up to file transcode media and then create proxy media now you can have prores proxy or h264 uh, that doesn't matter i'll just go for prores proxy and then you can select frame size uh, just keep it at 50 percent just to, uh, to speed things up the main thing is you're going to be reducing the size of the uh, files so you can edit through them quicker you click ok and then you'll see it up here in the progress window background task window you'll see that this transcoding and analysis and this will slowly go through and transcode all those clips to a proxy file now once that's done you need to go over to the viewer window again and go up to view and then select proxy only now obviously this takes some time and as you can see in the viewer we have one clip that's already converted this short clip here and that is now a proxy file and that'll play through normally. These files in red here are missing because they're not converted yet. So once it's gone through all that, you'll be able to see all your files in the browser. So then you'll be able to go in and edit in a much faster way because of the proxies. Now, someone once asked, will the quality of your video when you export be lower because of the proxies? And now if you was to try to export this now, go up to file, share, master file, it will give you a warning. So the project it's currently set to use for proxy media you can continue but obviously you don't want to you want to go back up to view then to optimize original and then export as normal and your file at the end will be full size now hack number four is a pretty big one and if you can learn shortcut keyboard uh, shortcut keyboards keyboard shortcuts then it'll save you so much time there's obviously a lot of ones that are by default but sometimes you want to set one up yourself maybe a command that you use a lot and for me that is slowing footage down to 50% for my b-roll for example now normally you'd have the clip selected in the timeline you would go up to the little clock here the little speedo whatever that is and you would go to slow and 50% and then that would slow down the clip. However, because this is something I use a lot, I wanted a, uh, a short, short, but oh my God, I wanted a 
keyboard shortcut for it. So therefore I mapped control Q, as you can see there, to instantly set any clip selected in the timeline to 50%. So therefore I have a nice slow mo of the carts coming down here. We do that simply by going up to Final Cut Pro on the toolbar and then commands and then customize. And then you see here, it bring up the command editor. Like I did, I wanted to use the slow 50% as a shortcut. So to search for that, I just go up to the search bar within the command editor, typed in slow, and then the commands are down here. And as you can see, retime slow 50% has my modifiers in there. So we've got the control key and Q. Say I want to change that to command W. I would just hit command W and then that would be set. As you can see, it's showing now in the modifier. So if we save this and close out the command editor, if we were to go and select a clip and do control W, that would change it then to 25%. So having all these keyboard shortcuts for the commands you use regular can really save you time. And another tip to add to this is keep try and keep your keyboard shortcuts over to the left side. That's if you use a mouse in your right hand. If you're left-handed, then try and keep them over to the right because you don't want to be taking your hand off the mouse to do a command, say, say control and then P, which is the opposite end. And that's then a two-handed uh, keyboard shortcut. It's kind of defeating the object a bit. So if you keep them all on the one hand like that, control Q, control W, then you can keep your hand on the mouse and it just speeds up the workflow overall. Now we're at the halfway point with number five. <laughs> And that is background rendering. Now, a feature of Final Cut is it renders your timeline in the background. So once you take your hand off any of the keys or the mouse, after a default setting of 0.3 seconds, it'll start to render the clips. Now, this is great. It's if you've walked away from your computer, you get a cup of coffee or whatever, and you come back, then everything's rendered and it plays through smoothly. But I find with that short time, it's constantly kicking in and using the resources of your CPU and slowing down your editing process so what I simply want to do here is go over to Final Cut Pro preferences it brings up this editing window so then you want to go to playback background render and you can change this to any seven seconds say and then at least it's not kicking in every you know 0.3 of a second and it's going into that render mode to stop or what you can do which I do most of the time is actually turn that off and do my rendering later. However, if you have some clips that have got titles, they've got an effect on top and you want to render those out, it's just a small portion of your edit, you can literally highlight that clip. Say you have a couple of clips in here, let's add another one. With that second clip in, I've reduced the speed to 25% with that shortcut I set up earlier, which was Control W. And as you can see now that this clip needs rendering, you can tell by the dots at the top of the timeline there. But what we wanna do, say you've got uh, some playback issues because this clip or this section has got maybe a title on it, you put some effects in it, transitions, and the playback's quite slow, then what we can do is just highlight that clip, go up to modify in the toolbar, and then render selection. And then that'll go through the process of rendering that one clip or that part of your edit. Then when playback happens, it's not gonna get stuck in that section, it'll play through normally. So hack number six will save you a ton of time and one I use on a daily basis and that is pasting attributes. Now say you've got a clip here, we've got two clips in the timeline again and this one slow down, you've maybe added some saturation in the mid tones and you wanna add the same to the next clip but you don't wanna go into that clip, add the saturation slow it down and you know just repeating the process clip to clip so what you want to do is paste the attributes of one clip to the next so you would select the clip that you've added the you know the slow-mo and the color change you would then do command c you would then select the clip that you want to paste the attributes to and then you would do shift command v it's then going to bring up this window that says paste attributes now here is a list of attributes that you're going to be copying from one clip to the next. You can see copied from this clip 241 to 245. 
you've got the color board which is the saturation that I've added and then you've got the retiming and the volume the volume will always be there by default but say you didn't want to you can turn those off and you can select any of these so you only wanted to transfer over the color you would just keep that selected and turn off the retiming so you didn't want to slow it down so you can turn these on and off as you wish and then it's simply clicking paste so you can see that clip now has gone into slow-mo and we've had the extra saturation that's added from the first clip now this one is saving presets there may be say a YouTube series like this that you do or a particular client has a a series of effects that you use regular throughout the clips so say we want to add an effect such as bad TV we add that to the clip you can see the change that that makes there say you want to crop in a little bit by say 20% and you want to apply that to every clip for this client because this is a the style they like for whatever reason what you can do is then save that effects preset it then brings up this window and gives you a list of all the commands and effects that you've added such as the crop the bad tv we can then name that effect say carting we can add that to a category or we can create a new one so i'm going to create a new one called gavs presets create and then save now down here I've got the Gavs presets category that I'd uh, selected the custom one and created myself and within that is the carting preset we can then literally just drag that over to the clip it'll then add the bad TV it'll also add 120% crop the only thing it won't carry over is the retiming but as we set up a shortcut for that earlier in the command editor it's a simple control Q for 50% or control W for 25% now number eight in the list is something I see a lot of people uh, be guilty of myself included because you kind of trying to put the cherry on the cake before the icing's on top and you want to add all your your LUTs to make the color look good you want to have all the cool effects like the bad TV we just added to this one before you've even laid out the full edit but it's slowing down your editing time the computer's got a lot to deal with in that timeline and you're unnecessarily adding that before you need it so I'd encourage you to do the actual cut with just raw clips in the timeline adding all your grading and titles is only going to slow down your computer so please wait until the end and then start adding the cherry on the cake after you've done the icing rather than the other way around so the penultimate penultimate I love that word the second to last tip in this video is double speed playback like me you may edit a lot of talking head footage and it seems a bit daft to just play that through as you're reviewing it and you're cutting it up and cutting out the ums and the ahs uh, to play that in normal speed so with the JK and L keys on the keyboard we can play through the footage twice as quickly so J would be reverse K is stop and L is play forwards but if you tap L twice it'll actually play through twice as quick our motto which you may have seen us post about on social media is P if we were to press L twice that would play at double speed is why we're proud to say that at Stuart Clinton property we provide generous sized rooms with en suites or self-contained apartments that anyone would be proud to live in so that's still perfectly audible and easy to understand at double speed and by doing that through all your talking head footage you may have hours upon hours and playing that in single speed seems crazy to me that you would do that I've seen a lot of editors will sit there and they're just playing and listening and I'm like well you you could be getting through this a lot quicker twice as quick half the time saved half the time saved yeah that's right half the time saved so this last tip is hardware related now this is a mouse i picked up some time ago and it's a logitech mx master 2s now i saw this online and i've seen some other editors talk about it and the great thing about this mouse is that you can customize the several buttons that are on this mouse to do common objects rather than you take your hand off the keyboard the good thing about this is you can create functions for specific programs or just general workflow so in here we have final cut pro and we can have app specific settings so on the top here we have this button which i have set for delete so rather than taking my hand off the mouse to hit the delete key on the keyboard i can literally click the button on the top here and delete clips in the timeline for example if i've got highlight this clip here then i press no hands on the keyboard, I've pressed the button on top 
of the mouse that will then delete that clip and I find that much quicker for me to go from rather than going from the keyboard to the mouse and moving my hands that way when you're in the when you're in the zone it's much quicker to hit that button on the mouse there now another one that I set up for this is the paste attributes this is something I use a lot but because of the number of key presses it's generally something that I take my hand off the mouse to do but with the Logitech mouse I can map that to the buttons on there to save me doing so so for example if we go into the Logitech software on my computer if we select the middle button here which is the scroll wheel which you can click in on this mouse and then we go down to keystroke assignment I can actually enter the paste attribute shortcut which is shift command V when I close this down if I take the attributes from this clip and I want to transfer them over to this second clip of the car in rather than do this shift command V to paste I'm just using the mouse. I have to copy them first, so it's just Command C, but this is on the left side of the keyboard, so I'm not having to use a two-handed shortcut. And then I select that clip, click the scroll wheel in, and then it brings up the paste attributes window. We select paste, and we've done that by not taking my hands off. And it's just another workflow technique to help you become faster at editing. So that brings us to the end of this video. I would love to know which was your favorite. Were there any I missed? I'd love to hear in the comments of something that you found valuable in your editing process that you can share with the community. And as ever, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.